Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and to my latest episode of New Album Spotlight. This is the show where I put the spotlight on a new progressive rock or related release that I think you guys might enjoy. I give my description of it and why I love it, and hopefully it inspires you guys to check it out in your own time. I, I would really love it if people checked out these great bands. There's so many great bands out there producing such great new music. I love the classics, but I really like to put the spotlight on newer bands that are really doing some interesting, fresh, and creative things in the in the prog rock genre. So today I have a really cool album called Waves of Loss and Power by the band Ice Age. And Ice Age hails from Long Island, New York. Formed in 1992 with classically trained Josh Pincus on vocals and keyboards and Jimmy Pappas on guitars when they met at college and were were really inspired by the early American progressive metal scene, uh, basically bands like Dream Theater and a love of bands like Queensryche and also classic rock and stuff like that like Rush, Kansas, Styx, and Journey. They were joined by Jalaponte on drums and Aaron De Cesare on bass. Uh, and they did two studio albums with Magna Carta, uh, The Great Divide in 99 and Liberation in 2001. Uh, they parted ways with their bass player and picked up Doug O'Dell. And so that's their current lineup. And they just released a new album. So between that Liberation album in 2001, it's been quite a lengthy hiatus. 22 years, it seems, from their last studio release. They did release an EP, it seems, in the meantime, called Little Bird. But this is the first full-length album since Liberation. So it's been a long hiatus, a long time away for these guys. But they're coming back with full force and really have an incredible album on their hands that I've just been digging really, really well. This is a band I wasn't very familiar with. I didn't catch their earlier works back when they came out. It was right on the cusp of me getting into progressive music in those days, so I just probably missed this just barely. But what I hear from this album I really enjoy and is going to make me want to look backwards a little bit to those earlier albums and see what I might have been missing. But what's cool about this album, you know, their build is progressive metal, but to me the, the metal sound is only one facet of what they're doing. And really they bring a lot of influences from progressive rock proper modern progressive rock, even bands like Spock's Beard, to me I could hear in this mix, and they pay homage to like classic bands of the 70s, art rock and glam rock type bands like Styx and Kansas, uh, Journey, I can hear all that influence in their sound, and the mix in this album just sounds fantastic. It's mixed by uh, Rich Mauser, who does a lot of the Neil Morse type stuff, and it all sounds really pristine and really great, so it's just a really clear sounding perfect little album that was really fun to go through and listen through the singer in particular josh pincus has a voice very much similar to like dennis de young of sticks a lot of people i've heard have built this band a little bit like dream theater meets sticks which i think is is pretty warranted there's a bit of that flavor in the makes but of course they have their own unique stamp and style but that makes the vocals very theatrical and very over the top which to me, I, I enjoy in sections, but I can admit that sometimes it could get a little bit over the top for my taste. But there's so much great stuff going on in the instrumental work that I can forgive a little bit of the over the top theatricality. But just be warned, there's a bit of cheesiness and a little over the topness to this, but I think it adds a little bit to the charm of the record and adds a, their own unique flavor and stamp onto the genre. Uh, so I really, really appreciate what they're doing here. Uh, I like The Needle's Eye, the opening track, which is probably one of the more standard prog, prog metal heavier tracks. A rousing rocking tune uh, really has that classic metal flavor with some of those theatrical vocals I was talking about. Some really cool riffs and heaviness. Has like a power metal type vibe with some great moments of guitar and keys. Uh, to me though, the highlight comes right after with River Flow, which to me is the, the piece de resistance of the album. This is the track that really made me perk my ears and give it my attention because it just has this really great classic symphonic prog feel like a lot of what Spock's beard likes to do in, in the modern era. Uh, it has this grand regal, almost regal feel really brought about by these uh, expressive, almost operatic, not quite operatic, but more theatrical vocal stylings. Uh, it's a great burst of energy, like good classic rock, but with a bit of a proggy bite. 
Um, I, I really like the classic influences, like from Styx and Kansas in here. Uh, really has a lot of fun, interesting directions. It's a 10 minute track that goes through a lot of different things. You know, some great vocal melodies that it keeps coming back to a really catchy chorus. But then they're able to experiment and go off into different directions in the instrumental sections. Just really some cool, fast, proggy bits that come, bring to mind even some of the more playful Dream Theater instrumental moments also. So that's the track to me that really made me pay attention and has become one of my favorite tracks of the year. I really love it. This leads into Perpetual Child Part 2 Forever, which seems that P Perpetual Child was a track from their first album, so this is a continuation. Interesting that they do that. They do that later in the album also. They're continuing tracks from their earlier albums, like sequel tracks almost, which I think is an interesting approach. I don't have much to say in the sequel aspect, because like I said, I'm not very familiar with their early work, so uh, how they connect to their earlier tracks isn't something I quite know much about, but this track in particular has more of that classic prog metal flavor, like something from Dream Theater or Symphony X, a more laid back verse with great expressive vocals and solid guitar uh, playing, but then we get more of that instrumental interplay that you can hear in a lot of classic prog metal. There's some pounding drums, quirky chugging guitars, and atmospheric keys, and it just really builds into a really cool prog metal instrumental uh, powerhouse section. Some dream theater inspiration in those moments, and, but always grounded with great melodies and soaring vocals. Just a really cool track that takes you, the listener, on quite a cool journey. Together Now is a really great track that I liked a lot also. Uh, still in that lane of classic old school prog metal with triumphant sounds and anthemic keys and meaty bass and soaring vocals. There's a bit of a groovier section with cool guitars and vocals and then it switches into a section with more power. Uh, so I like that dichotomy, the, that going back and forth between those heavier and more laid back sections to give it more variety. There's almost some classical inspired keys later in the track and some bluesy guitar soloing. Just a really cool eight minute track that showcases all the different facets of the band. Then you get into two shorter, more streamlined tracks that are more catchier and poppier perhaps, but still have that metal bite to them. Reminds me of stuff from like modern era Rush perhaps, or Enchant is another band that I think about with this band. Just some really cool, focused rock songs that really are placed well in this track listening and are both really fun to listen to. I really like Float Away in particular. has a cool, busy bass line and some pleasing guitar uh, parts as well. I like the power of the guitar and the chorus, and then it kind of floats back into the verses with that more busy bass line and cool, fluid sounding guitars. It's just a really cool vibe. And then we get this one-two punch at the end of the record to say goodbye, parts four and five apparently. They're continuations, like I said, of, of to say goodbye from their prior album. Uh, Remembrance, the first of this, uh, is more of a classical piano piece that takes place over two and a half minutes, leading into the big epic uh, that's near 15 minutes long. Has kind of a laid back, bluesier style with a great beat and some cool low piano notes. Uh, some soaring guitar lines and those theatrical style vocals are back into play. Some great proggy styles with some big sweeping sounds and keyboards. Just a culmination of all the great things that you've been hearing on this record. More that proggy style going through a journey of several different sections and really displaying their prowess on their instruments and their penchant for good melodies and it really leads to a rousing, satisfying conclusion. So just all in all, there's not much I can say to complain about this one. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, if there's any minor complaints, it's just that cheesiness in the vocal stylings at times, but sometimes it's a bit charming and fun and brings a new added flavor that is unique to them that I think is really well done. So. Uh, I can't complain too hard about it. I love Riverflow. If you're not gonna check out the whole album, uh, just check out that one track if you're into the same kind of progressive rock that I am. I think it's just a really cool masterpiece of a song right on this track list. So it's just one I've been really digging and really been enjoying. I can't really put my finger on why it's been such a fun listen, but it has. And I love this kind of music. This is the prog metal style that I really like when it's more playful and fun and they're enjoying themselves and it's not too overly dark and heavy and depressing you know that's the kind of stuff that tends to 
not connect with me as much in a lot of ways, but I really love this. This is a fun album, so please check it out if you're into that classic prog metal stylings. If you like Styx and Kansas and Journey and those types of bands uh, mixed in with a bit of that prog metal bite and throw in a dash of like classic Spock's beard, and you've got a really fun group to listen to and a really fun album that was just a joy to, to experience. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you guys for watching my review, and I hope this inspires you guys to go check out the album. So thank you guys, and I'll catch you hopefully in a future episode. Thank you guys. Bye.